Hi, uh, for the next 25, 30 minutes or so, uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, the digitalization of IT, uh, why procurement can't afford to fall behind in this process. Um, and this is going to really include um, uh, discussions around the key findings on a piece of research we did in H2 last year. Um, I'll cover off some of the uh, some of the responses that we had, uh, but more importantly, at the end, I'll finish up with some uh, key actions um, and kind of tips, guidance, and advice in terms of how to overcome some of those problems. <clears throat> so, very quickly, uh, who am I? Um, so, I'm Ian Nethercott. I'm Supply Chain Director of ProBrand. Um, so, I've been in IT procurement now for over 18 years. Um, I control an annual IT spend of 35 million a year. Um, I've done many things over the years, um, speaking on uh, the subject matter of IT procurement. Um, I've, I've appeared in ITV News and Newsnight when uh, the, 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 the news of COVID broke um, to the world. Uh, I was kind of talking about um, the impacts on the, the, the IT had on the supply chain. Um, I've also done things in the SIP CPD knowledge base, learning system, articles like Spend Matters and various other trade publications. So, um, so yeah, been in the industry a long time um, and uh, love talking to uh, customers and supply chain partners uh, on the subject of IT. So firstly, uh, I wanted to start off with this. Uh, this was a snapshot from um, an article that was in the SIP Supply Chain Management magazine uh, quite recently last year. Um, and this statement uh, was from Malcolm Harrison, who's the SIP's group CEO. Um, and this really kind of sums up the, I, I guess the, the, the whole presentation and really just is an anchor um, for everything that I'm going to talk about over the next 20 minutes or so. Um, quite simply, this says, if you are standing still in the digital space, then you are already falling behind. Um, that's absolutely true. And uh, we're going to go through that in some detail now uh, as we move forward in this presentation. So firstly, I wanted to start off um, really talking about what you need as an organization um, to go down this journey of the digitalization uh, of your IT procurement. Um, so firstly uh, is improved efficiency. Uh, we all need uh, more efficiency as an organization for sure, but certainly in the world of IT, you know, IT um, the, the IT category is always going to be um, one of the largest areas of indirect spend for any organization, if not the largest area. So <laughs> it's certainly a category where we need to drive um, as much efficiency as we can, um, lots and lots of complex moving parts, um, so the more efficient we can be, uh, the better. Uh, we obviously want cost savings as procurement people. We're all here to uh, deliver cost savings into the business for sure. Um, you know, when we talk about cost savings, um, I always like to say that, you know, this is not about buying at the lowest price possible or buying cheap. Um, you know, this is um, about buying at best value, um, at optimum value. That's that's the most important thing here. But obviously, the, uh, the the category of IT is very very complex, very volatile from a from a cost and price standpoint. Um, so um, so so doing as much as we can to deliver cost savings is uh, is very critical. Um, next is revenue creation. You know, we're uh, we're all uh, we're all here. We're all watching this uh, presentation because we care about our businesses. Uh, we want our businesses to thrive and grow, and that's about building revenue uh, in, within the business. And certainly, digitalization is going to uh, assist with that. Uh, next is improvements in supply chain management. Um, obviously, I don't have time in this presentation to to talk about all of the the moving parts in terms of. Uh, what what the entire IT supply chain looks like. Um, my contact details will be left uh, at the end of this presentation. So certainly speak to me, um, uh, contact me if you want to talk further about that. More than happy to talk to people about that subject. Um, but but in terms of this, um, it, it's it's very much around um, making that supply chain uh, as slick and efficient uh, as possible. Um, there are multiple tiers in the supply chain. Um, all of the cogs within that supply chain need to be kept turning all the time. It needs to be very transparent uh, between you and your supply chain partners. 
so that the, the, the slicker that, uh, that, that wheel is really in terms of that turning supply chain um, is, is, is very, very important in terms of uh, dig digitalization. Uh, we need better customer satisfaction. Uh, that should always be up there as a, an important part um, uh, for, for any organization that we want happy customers. Um, clearly that bleeds into um, you know revenue creation on here you know we've got happy customers they're going to uh, spend more with us they're going to engage more with us it means our business are going to thrive more um, and and digitalization is going to help to provide that better uh, customer satisfaction uh, competitive advantage really really important um, you know we all want to have that advantage over our competition um, and you'll see from uh, the findings in this uh, in this research that I'll share uh, in a moment that uh, by going down this route of digitalization of IT, um, without doubt, you're going to give yourself a competitive uh, advantage uh, in this space. Um, and last but not least is employee engagement. Uh, you know, we, we want engaged employees in our business. But, you know, people want to work for a business that that is tech savvy. Um, you know that's that's very efficient. Um, you know, and the more the more efficient, the more tech savvy you are as a business, uh, the more engaged employees are going to be. You know, the more they're going to be feel part of uh, and immersed in in the in the in the goings on uh, within your organisation. The more happier your staff uh, are going to be. So, um, so that's just really a summary of, uh, of of not not an exhaustive list, but a lot of the things that I believe uh, you need um, to 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 be on this journey. So firstly, I wanted to start off um, really talking about what you need as an organization um, to go down this journey of the digitalization uh, of your IT procurement. Um, so firstly uh, is improved efficiency. Uh, we all need uh, more efficiency as an organization for sure, but certainly in the world of IT, you know, IT um, the, the IT category is always going to be um, one of the largest areas of indirect spend for any organization, if not the largest area. So <laughs> it's certainly a category where we need to drive um, as much efficiency as we can, um, lots and lots of complex moving parts. Um, so the more efficient we can be, uh, the better. Uh, we obviously want cost savings as procurement people. We're all here to uh, deliver cost savings into the business for sure. Um, you know, when we talk about cost savings, um, I always like to say that, you know, this is not about buying at the lowest price possible or buying cheap. Um, you know, this is um, about buying at best value, um, at optimum value. That's that's the most important thing here. But obviously, the, uh, the the category of IT is very very complex, very volatile from a from a cost and price standpoint. Um, so um, so so doing as much as we can to deliver cost savings is uh, is very critical. Um, next is revenue creation. You know, we're uh, we're all uh, we're all here. We're all watching this uh, presentation because we care about our businesses. Uh, we want our businesses to thrive and grow, and that's about building revenue uh, in, within the business. And certainly, digitalization is going to uh, assist with that. Uh, next is improvements in supply chain management. Um, obviously, I don't have time in this presentation to to talk about all of the the moving parts in terms of. Uh, what what the entire IT supply chain looks like. Um, my contact details will be left uh, at the end of this presentation. So certainly speak to me, um, uh, contact me if you want to talk further about that. More than happy to talk to people about that subject. Um, but but in terms of this, um, it, it's it's very much around um, making that supply chain uh, as slick and efficient uh, as possible. Um, there are multiple tiers in the supply chain. Um, all of the cogs within that supply chain need to be kept turning all the time. It needs to be very transparent uh, between you and your supply chain partners so that the, the, the slicker that, uh, that that wheel is really in terms of that turning supply chain um, is, is, is very, very important in terms of uh, dig digitalization. Uh, we need better customer satisfaction. Uh, that should always be up there as a, an important part um, uh, for, for any organization that we want happy customers. Um, clearly that bleeds into um, you know revenue creation on here. You know, we've got happy customers, they're going to uh, spend more with us, they're going to engage more with us. It means our business are going to thrive more. Um, and, and digitalization is going to help to provide that better uh, customer satisfaction. 
uh, competitive advantage, really, really important. Um, you know, we all want to have that advantage over our competition. Um, and you'll see from uh, the findings in this uh, in this research that I'll share uh, in a moment that uh, by going down this route of digitalization of IT, um, without doubt, you're going to give yourself a competitive uh, advantage uh, in this space. Um, and last but not least is employee engagement. Uh, you know, we, we want engaged employees in our business. But, you know, people want to work for a business that that is tech savvy, um, you know, that, that's very efficient. Um, you know, and the more the more efficient, the more tech savvy you are as a business, uh, the more engaged employees are going to be, you know, the more they're going to be feel part of uh, and immersed in, in the in the in the goings on uh, within your organization, the more happier your staff uh, are going to be so um so that's just really a summary of uh, of, of not not an exhaustive list but a lot of the things that i believe uh you need um to to, to be on this journey So the research uh, that we did um, was was done in H2 uh, last year, and this was done in partnership with SIPS. Um, and this piece of research, research went out to the SIPS subscriber base. And we really wanted to understand um, where organizations were on their uh, IT digitalization journey. Um, have people started it? Have they thought about it? Have they have they have they done it? Have they completed it? Uh, you know, and, and, and what were what were the challenges and pain points along that process and we wanted to get under the skin of um, uh, of these organizations and find out exactly where people were um, so uh, that's what uh, I'm going to talk about now in the uh, in the next slides um, and share some of those findings so firstly um, uh, you know we wanted to understand on average how long uh, do, does your organization or your team spend manually researching IT purchases? And really what I'm referring to here is um, all of that kind of traditional work of going out to get prices from your suppliers, going out to source stock availability, also things like comparing the technical specs of equipment and services and, and those kinds of uh, duties that exist within a, a traditional IT procurement job. Um, and, and as you can see from the results on this graph here, that there's, there's 25% um, who are spending a working day uh, every spin, every single week um, on on this this particular part of the process. Um, obviously, that equates to nearly a working week every month. You know, and and, and this is all the all the time that's consumed with this traditional manual process of, uh, you know, organisations who are picking up the phone and calling supplier after supplier to confirm a price or find out if they've got it in stock. All of that drains a huge amount of time. Uh, you know the IT category is extremely volatile. Naturally, prices change very quickly. They certainly can change on a daily basis. I even see prices change within the same working day. Naturally, stock changes very quickly as well. Um, you know we're still in um, a number of market constraints uh, in the IT category from the pandemic, um, and and the, you know the stock situation is still very volatile in some categories. Um, the stock data that you'll get from suppliers uh, will, <clears throat> will often not be very accurate as well. You know, the suppliers you're dealing with may not have access to true live data sources from the supply chain. Um, so there's a lot of continual checking that has to be done uh, on stock. You know, I speak to many organizations who have that ongoing sort of burning problem of, uh, you know, they, they'll, they'll phone and get a, um, a price from a supplier. They'll confirm the stock level. Everything's all good. They'll come back to place their order and all of a sudden the stock's gone or the price has changed and, and those kinds of things that happen. Um, very difficult to compare specs and options as well. You know, it's not a it's not a, a, a quick job if you're trying to manually search through products and specifications and those kinds of things. Uh, you know, you can look at a couple of different laptop devices. They can, on the face of it, they can look very similar. They can be a very similar price. Um, obviously, you need to be sure that you're buying the right equipment for your organization and, and all of that work take, naturally takes time as well. So the next one is, uh, yeah, how long does it take you to raise a PO number? Um, almost half of the people that we've spoken to uh, takes uh, one to two days. Um, you can see there's another 34% that's three to five days and, and the others are even longer. Um, and, and quite simply, this, this just isn't good enough uh, in this day and age um, in IT procurement. Uh, it's far too long to secure stock, you know, uh, obviously going off that previous uh, question that was there, you know, if you're going doing all that work of 
you know, getting the price that you want, securing the stock with a supplier. You know, that supplier in a lot of instances probably won't be able to hold the stock for you for a long period of time, certainly not for a, you know, anywhere between two days to a couple of weeks or anything like that. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult in this day and age to try and secure stock without a purchase order. Um, so it's going to give you duplication of, uh, of effort from that perspective. Naturally, prices can obviously change as well. If it's going to take you a few days to, or something like that to raise a purchase order number, your price can change as well. And, you know, you could be paying a higher price uh, than what you had before. And, and again, all of this, you're going to just duplicate your work. It means you've got to go back to suppliers. You've got to get another price from them. Um, yeah, you've got to go through all those conversations again. And all of this obviously is a, is a huge time cumbersome process. Uh, so next is what's your primary method for placing IT orders? Um, and, and as you can see here, there's 63% that's manually processing orders. Um, only 37% are doing them online or doing them in some form of uh, digital process. Um, email is a very archaic way now to, to be placing orders. There's the, it brings with it lots of problems. It's obviously a time-consuming process. Uh, it's not time-consuming from the point of view of uh, you know, just the time that it physically takes out to, you know, to, to type out that email or that purchase order. Uh, I guess what I'm referring to there is is the fact that you're also relying on um, uh, a supplier, a person within a, the supplier at the other end who's manually keying that order on as well. Um, you know, it's, it's the time for them to do that. And it's also the time of when that person will actually recognize that email in their inbox and go and process that for you. That could be a number of hours, even days, down the line, you know, if the person you've sent the purchase order to um, is, you know, out of office for, for the day or they're they're in a meeting for a few hours or they might be on annual leave or on sick leave or all kinds of different reasons, um, there is no guarantee whatsoever how quick your order uh, is going to be processed. Um, obviously, this whole uh, manual processing as well um, keeps you open to human error. You know, we're all human beings. We all make errors. Um, you know, typing errors and those kinds of things. You know, you you can put in the wrong quantity on your purchase order. It could be the wrong price or the wrong part number or a combination of all of the above. And that's on both sides of the fence. That's both on on you as the buyer, but also the supplier as well. You know, they've got to go and manually key that order on as well. So you've got to rely on their accuracy uh, of doing that as well. Lots of suppliers won't necessarily be honest enough uh, to tell you something is wrong. You know, if you put um, 100 pounds for an item on your purchase order and actually it should be 10 pounds, you put the decimal point in the wrong place, um, you know, some suppliers won't be honest enough to tell you and they'll quite happily go and process your order and all of a sudden uh, you're paying a much higher price for for, for the goods than, than what you intend to. Um, again, all of this uh, is all time delays uh, in processing as well. Um, so what data points uh, do you record for all of your IT purchases? Um, these four uh, categories um, that, that I've listed on here are really the, the four critical data points that you have to record if you truly want to be able to analyze uh, your IT spend and benchmark your IT spend. Uh, so manufacturer's part number, the date you, you placed your order, the price you obviously paid, and the quantity of what you bought. Um, and there, there are so many organizations that I talk to that, that just simply do not record all four data points. They might do one of them, two of them, three of them. Very, very rare. And this research shows that it's very rare that, that anybody has recorded all four data points. Uh, manufacturer's part number is the lowest one. Um, that was no real surprise to me because I see lots and lots of purchase orders um, that, that just don't have a part number. They use a, 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 some kind of vague description or even a, a little dot where the, uh, the part number should go just because they want to overcome that, that field in the purchase order process quickly. And uh, there's all of these kinds of things that goes on, but you need to be recording all of these four data points if you really want to properly analyze your IT spend. And, and as I said earlier on at the beginning that, you know, IT is, is a, will be a truly important category for any any organization it, it'll be one of the largest areas of indirect spend we need to be able to analyze um, our, our activity and our spend truly so by recording all these four data points um, uh, it's absolutely critical
So how often is your catalog price data updated? Uh, so apologies, there's a, a couple of uh, colors here that seem to have come out very, very similar. Uh, but I'll talk through this uh, anyway. So we, we see uh, very regular that there can be up to 60,000 price changes on any single day. Um, as you can see from this graph here, I mean, there's 27% there's, there's of organizations who are only updating their price data monthly. Um, there's a significant proportion, 13%, who are never doing it. Uh, Fifteen percent um, uh, do it yearly. Um, you know, there's there's, there's only f another fifteen percent who do it every single day. So it's a tiny, tiny proportion of um, organisations that we spoke to um, who are actually doing this on a daily basis. Um, again, it's just not good enough uh, in 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 this day and age in IT procurement. You know, the market is probably the most volatile it's it's ever been. Um, you know, we're still seeing rapid price changes every single day, certainly from one, one month to the next, um, as vendors come out with new promotions and new offers and uh, how they adjust to market conditions and demand and constraints and so many factors that go into the mix in terms of what will affect the price. Currency exchange rates are obviously a big factor as well. Uh, that has an effect every single day on, on prices in the IT channel. And all of this work um, is is uh, very difficult then to control budgets. You know, if you've gone and done a piece of work to um, uh, to, to look for budgets on a particular project, you know, you've gone and sourced pricing for a, um, some some IT equipment and services. Um, you know, obviously, though, if you're not tracking those prices, uh, then all of that work can be can be redundant if you've then got to go and do all that again because prices have changed. You haven't tracked that. You haven't got alerts for that. Uh, you know, it's going to cause you a significant burden uh, of additional admin. Uh, and there's something definitely that we that we don't need as IT buyers for sure. Uh, second one here is the same uh, same question just around stock. So how often is your uh, catalog stock data updated? Um, quite simply, anything less than an hour, in my opinion, is out of touch. 26% um, uh, here are doing it monthly. Another twenty six percent never ever do it. Um, you know, it's um, the, these these figures just tell a story that um, that that lots of organisations are way behind the curve in terms of in terms of stock. You know, this is always going to cause you uh, delays in deployment. Um, you know, if again, if you do all that piece of work to try and secure stock with a supplier, you go and place your purchase order, and that stock has changed because you haven't been tracking that in your system. Uh, you know that's going to set you back if you, you've got you've got uh, you know delivery of a project scheduled for a, a specific time it's going to delay the deployment of those projects within your organization that can have significant impacts on uh, on on the success of your business and the strategic approach of your business um, you you can obviously get frustrated staff you know if you've got people who have been promised their their laptop replacement because it's not functioning properly or they need their headset replacing because that isn't functioning properly or they need access to newer technology to make them more efficient you're going to have frustrated staff because uh, you know if they're being told well you know it's been delayed again it's been delayed again uh you know it's it's not a not a good place that you want to be as i said before we want engaged employees uh, in this approach and all of this costs you money quite simply you know time uh, time is money certainly so So do you believe you're getting good value on all IT purchases? Now, uh, j just to avoid confusion here, this is, we, we did a separate piece of research, not the one that we're, we're talking about here. We did a separate piece of research uh, earlier on uh, last year in 2022, um, all around benchmarking. And, and uh, we, we spoke to lots and lots of large corporate organizations to understand the margins they were paying in, in certain product areas and categories. We found that 81% um, of those organizations were not getting the value they thought they were. Uh, essentially, what I mean by that is that, that they believe they were paying certain levels of margin and actually it was very, very different to the reality of, of what they were paying. Um, and that's really overlaid, I guess, in terms of this graph that's shown here. There's a significant proportion here who are either um, unsure um, that, that they're getting good value um, or they don't believe they're getting good value. Um, and that, that just isn't good enough in, in IT. You know, we need to be sure, we need to be confident that we're getting good value from our suppliers. Um, so uh, this is really just a, a, a bit of a line graph here just to show that actually where are you on that journey uh, to digitalizing your IT procurement. I'm not gonna talk through every step here, but 
essentially what what this um, graphic is showing here is that it's down that right hand side is really where we want to be you know there's, there's, there was 18 percent of the organizations we spoke to who uh, said that they were fully digitalized which is great um, but there's a big proportion here who either have no plan at all uh, they, they they want to do it but don't have a plan or they're in the process of doing something but there's there's a there's a good proportion um, of organizations that are in that space and that's not where you want to be you need to be down this right hand side getting to that uh, area of being fully digitalized um, you know uh, right at that that statement right at the beginning you know if you're not doing this you are going to get left behind you already will be getting left behind um, if you're down the left hand side of this line graph here uh, and naturally you're going to have a competitive disadvantage which obviously um, I'm sure you don't want so what are the, the biggest barriers uh, to digitalization for you? Uh, quite interestingly, uh, it was budget, as you can see, that came out as number one. Um, it's just very interesting because th there is there is this big kind of myth out there that, um, that that it costs you know significant money to go and digitalize your business. You know, people think that it costs hundreds of thousands of pounds or millions of pounds to go and put these systems in place, and actually, it's far from the case. Certainly, from the point of IT. Uh, lots of these things are, are much much easier um, very cost effective things uh, that you can go and do so um, so I just wanted to really dispel that that sort of myth out there it was just quite interesting to see that budget was uh, was number one so I now just want to talk about uh, some top tips really some guidance in terms of how to overcome uh, some of these challenges um, that I've been through in the in the in the findings of this research, certain things to think about uh, when it comes to uh, digitalization of IT procurement. Um, so, firstly, is um, is analyzing time-consuming tasks. So this is this is really stripping back to the basics. This is starting with a blank canvas, look at all of your processes within your organization in in terms of your procurement uh, processes and understand right which are the areas that's consuming most of your time uh, is it raising purchase orders uh, is it sourcing stock is it finding prices and negotiating prices is it managing suppliers you know look at all of all of the processes that processes that's involved um, uh, in your procurement function um, analyze the time that those things are taking and put that in a simple risk management matrix you know start with a at, at the very top we'll have your most time consuming tasks uh, going down to the lowest priorities at the bottom and that's how and so you just prioritize it in order and start to pick off uh, one of those segments one at a time in terms of what's uh, consuming the most time within your function and that's going to get you towards that uh, improved efficiency uh, goal much quicker um, you know you need to look at um, supplier platforms and portals um, you know you need to understand the digital capability of your suppliers you know if you're <clears throat> if you're going down this uh, digital journey then you need to be engaged with suppliers who are on that journey as well or have been through that journey you know you can't achieve a, a fully digitalized IT procurement function if you're not engaging with suppliers who are on that digital uh, path as well um, you know you need to be working with suppliers who have platforms and portals that connect into the supply chain you know there's lots of suppliers all say they've got a website and all these kinds of things and that's all good but a website it doesn't mean it's a true digital service um, you know you need to understand actually what their platform does what their portal does um, you know what services that can give you um, out the back of that and can that tie in with what your uh, digital strategy is as a business and give you um, uh, the efficiency and value that you need from those processes uh, you need access to live data sources um, so uh, this really covers off uh, the point I mentioned in terms of um, all of that time that's spent in going out to find prices and find stock availability um, live data sources exist within the channel and live data sources are provided through um, through uh, multiple services usually through what's called an FTP data feed that's a file transfer protocol data feed also through, through, uh, through things like API links or XML feeds um, these data sources come out of the authorized IT channel um, so uh, again this goes back to uh, the point above in terms of the supplies that you're working with um, you know can they provide you with these live data sources that can plug into your system that is going to reduce a phenomenal amount of time 
that 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 you're currently spending if you're doing all of that traditional work of, of, of picking up the phone and doing all these things manually through telephone calls and emails and 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 all, and all those traditional methods um you know this will make a, a huge difference um it will it will enable uh, your procurement people to be procurement people you know it's not a good use of their time just to be picking up the phone all day long and confirming price and stock and all those all that kind of information if you can provide them with that data up front it means they can be more proactive and, and do more meaningful more meaty jobs that, that we would prefer um, those people to do uh, the next one is uh, seek supply chain transparency um, now this this is probably not necessarily directly tied into um, this, this kind of digitalization approach but I, I really wanted to put this on here because I think it's something that's quite often overlooked but it does kind of loosely tie into this uh, this whole process um, and, and really what I'm referring to here is um, is, is around the, the the transparency of the suppliers that you're dealing with you need to understand who that supplier is and what I mean by that is there's 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 lots of IT suppliers out there who are not necessarily um, procuring and selling through an authorized IT channel. Um, there, there are authorized uh, distributors for vendors that exist within the supply chain. Um, and, and it's an authorized supply chain that's going to be the most efficient from a digital perspective. That is where you're going to get access to those kinds of live data sources. So you need to understand who your suppliers are. Can they provide those services? And you need to also look for suppliers who have multiple data sources. You know, it's no good just working with a supplier who can provide you a single data source for their own stock level. Um, that might be fine for that supplier, but actually, you know, it's not going to improve um, your efficiency as much if if, um, if if you've still then got to replicate that with, with lots of other suppliers. So you can look for suppliers who, who give you access to multiple data sources uh, across the IT channel. Um, next is integration of systems. This is something um, you know we're talking to more and more organisations about these days. Um, this is really the way to get a fully seamless end-to-end -end process uh, from a procurement perspective. So if you're using an ERP system like uh, Cooper or SAP or Oracle or Microsoft Dynamics or any of those kinds of things, um, you know these supplier portals or platforms. Um, should be able to integrate into those systems again that that's maybe a question for you to ask your suppliers you know when you're doing this piece of research work with them you know can your system integrate into our erp system um, and that will give you uh, uh, really a really a that seamless experience of a punch out scenario so um, you know the supplies catalog can sit as a tile on your erp system uh, it punches out into that supply catalog you build up your uh, kind of requirements list it drags it back into your erp system and from there you can then go and raise your requisition and purchase order or within your own environment without really duplication of effort or going off into another uh, another system somewhere or sit secure uh, within your own environment uh, next is consider a digital approval workflow process um, so this is one of the reasons uh, that i mentioned on the slide um, around the time it takes to generate purchase orders. This is one of the common reasons um, that, that, that I see uh, as to what, what kind of goes on in this in this space here. Um, having a, a, a digital approval workflow process is actually quite a really easy thing to do. That is all it is, it's just a workflow. You know, if you've got a delegation of authority policy within your organization, if you've got a policy that shows those multiple tiers and those thresholds of um, who's got authorization to spend at certain levels, um, that can be quite put in quite a simple digital uh, workflow process. You know, you shouldn't be, you know, printing off pieces of paper and walking them into an office for a physical signature, and all of this co causes uh, drain on time and additional burden of admin and those kinds of things. So that's something that um, definitely to consider. It's very very easy to digitalize those uh, those kinds of processes. Um, obviously, placing orders digitally. Um, you know, as I've shown on that slide, there was only. 37% uh, of customers who were doing that. Um, something you really need to be doing, it removes all of that, uh, all of that kind of uh, human interaction and, and um, removes the, or mitigates the risk of human error against those orders, reduces that time significantly that's spent uh, on processing orders. And the other plus point is it records all of those data points for you as well. So as I mentioned, those four points, the manufacturer's part number, the price, the quantity, 
the date of when you uh, place that order when you do them digitally that is all done for you automatically you know that that's it gives you a reporting mechanism then because you can extract that data out of that system so it ticks a lot of boxes uh, for purely from processing orders digitally um, so moving away from that traditional email telephone dare i say it fax based uh process uh digital um is going to fundamentally change uh change the landscape for you um, and then last but not least is better data management um you need to have better data management it's critical for analytics um you know the the the, the more of that data you're storing in your system you need access to that data to be able to report and analyze your historical spend you know, look at the categories, look at areas of spend where you can buy better or where you can consolidate brands and categories to, together to drive more value. Uh, you know, how much are you actually spending every year on IT? So many organizations that I talk to just do not know the answer to that question. Um, you know, by having better data management in place um, is going to give you the ability to just answer that question, um, you know, in the click of the fingers and, uh, and and you should know that information. It should be at your fingertips. Um, and so by having that better data management in place, it's going to solve that problem for you. So just to finish off, really, I just wanted to cover off um, a couple of final thoughts um, uh, on this subject matter. So, you know, digital solutions uh, really drive advanced strategy uh, within your business. It will teach you things uh, about your procurement function within IT um, that you, you just never realized. Um, it's going to give you far more insightful information. It's going to make you far more efficient as a business. All of those things you remember at the beginning, that I said all those things you need. This is what it's going to. This is what it's going to do for you. And and the other point I wanted to put on here that maybe something we don't necessarily think about too much, but it's think about how it can attract the best talent for your business as well. So you know uh, we all want the best employees. We all want strong candidates. You know you're sitting there interviewing candidates for your business. You know you've got to sell your business to them as well um, and make your business look attra an attractive place to work. And if you can demonstrate that you're a you know, you're a digitalized business or you're on this journey, you know, you're a tech savvy business, that's quite attractive for people. Certainly the younger generation of today that's coming through, you know, they, they want to work for a, uh, you know, this tech savvy kind of business. So, um, so, so by going down this road, um, it's just going to make you much more of an attractive organization to work for. Um, so uh, this report uh, obviously is is available. Um, you can, uh, you can download it from us, uh, from our website. Um, uh, so please go and do that. The things I've shared uh, in this presentation uh, is a headline summary of some of the key findings, uh, but it's not an exhaustive list of all the questions or responses that we receive. So uh, please uh, certainly come and download that report, some really uh, interesting and insightful information that's in there. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for uh, watching the presentation. Um, uh, my contact details are there. Please reach out to me. Um, if you want to talk about anything uh, on the subject matter of IT procurement, um, then, uh, then I'll be happy to have a conversation. So yeah, thank you for your time.